Welcome to the Zambian Genius. This is the home of creative thinkers. We don't just boast, we show why we call it that. My name is Samuel Machishi. Today, I have two boys walking to ZMBC Mass Media Complex and claiming they are genius. And that's why we want to indeed subject them to you so that you can, at the end of the program, conclude whether they're genius or not. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. And good to see you too. Thank you, sir. These two guys are actually brothers. Big brother is in grade 12. Young brother is in grade 9. Your name? Kaumba Sakungo. And? Kisu Sakungo. Two brothers, there you have it. So, these two, they claim they've got something that can amaze the nation. And we have no idea why they created it. I'll start with the young brother. What have you got? Uh, I created a project named Jenna, short for Junior Educator for Navigable Academics. So uh, this project helps provide educational services where pupils can go and use it and it's going to provide uh, its knowledge. You ask it a question, it's going to bring back uh, the answer for that question. It didn't have to be connected to the internet or not. It didn't have to be connected. Away from the internet, it can work? Yes. You are in grade 12? Yes. How conversant are you with computers, programming and things like that? Um, I've actually been studying computer science uh, just on a personal level with my own interest. So uh, in this recent jet sphere, I was participating in the out of school uh, computer science category. Uh, I developed a software which was uh, able to manage a school system. So in that case, I used um, highly developed tools to come up with that software. So in the, in the term of programming, I, I've actually dwelled more into programming. I've been able to learn more advanced. I deliberately asked you that question because I wanted to understand if you know about ChatGPT. ChatGPT, yes. You know it, right? Yes. I thought so. And the initiator of this innovation that you have is? It's him. Excellent. At only in grade nine and he's able to come up with this. Have you heard of ChatGPT? Yes. You know it? You know how it functioned? Yes. Did you copy anything from there? No. Okay, the knowledge of why I created this, uh, of course, many people have tried to create um, uh, multiple, like, okay, tried to create uh, duplicates of ChatGPT, but what, what are they creating it for? So what I created, it's specifically, specifically under education, uh, medicine and lecturing. For example, if a lecture is not around in a specific lecture room, uh, this program or this project is going to take in the place of a lecturer and it's going to start lecturing out there, maybe a certain lesson, maybe computer science in medicine. Then again, in rural areas where it's hard for people to, f to get access to internet, uh, if this program is uh, programmed to, uh, if this program is programmed to answer questions, so that means if, if all the answers are ready with it and if it's within the curriculum, programmed within the curriculum, so that means whichever question someone tries to ask... You feed it yes. with all the questions, yes. all, so, all the answers to yes. any question. Yes, so it's going to, instead of you having to connect it online, you would have to answer even offline. Why not just go to a YouTube channel and have somebody do some kind of a lecture and then give it to people in the rural areas and they also watch? Oh. Well, okay, in this case, we're looking at what others may have. It's not that everyone can have access to internet. But in this, in this scenario, this project has a library which stores all information such that even without internet access, it can be, a person may be able to um, ask it questions and learn from it without the help of internet. Defense. I love it on the Zambian Genius. We ask the innovators questions so that they can prove it. It's them that own this innovation. And I like the way you are talking. Who programmed this? It was him. Okay. Where do you come in? Uh, I actually, a, I, I was the one who was with him. Okay. Yes. You, it's a teamwork? Yes, it's a teamwork. Great. Initiated by a, a grade nine, uh, a ninth grader. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed by what you are able to do. Um, talk is cheap. The innovation is in here. 
looks like a bomb. <laughs> I hope the mass media complex will not explode. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. There it is. Looks like a robot. Yes. It's a robot. Yeah, I can tell. Two legs, two hands. That's the head. Yes. Okay. Babu Bueran. This is Bruce, one of our characters down at ZMDC. Pick up the phone down there, bro. Okay. Say hi to the people. Hi, hi. Great. Now we can chess you so that you remain with a genius. Okay. Give it to me. Give it to me. Stay here, Bruce. Uh, I just realized I needed to give you my password. It's not an offense that we have a password. So we can be taking selfies as we explain this thing. Okay. Now I want you to get down to work. Huh? Yes. Um, again, you said, why did you innovate this? Um, the, the other reason why we created it is because Church GPT has got limited languages. Okay. So not in, it's not like everyone can understand English in Zambia. Zambia has a lot of local languages. So if uh, apart, right now this is able to speak in Chinyanja and English, and also some teaching how to speak Luvali. But if it was to be programmed in all the local languages, every person would be able to understand what it's trying to say and you ask in your local languages. The world is concerned about artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence will be simply doing literally anything that we, th we are thinking of right now. And in Zambia, we already have these two guys creating this guy, a robot that comes in place of a teacher. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. And a lecturer. At the moment, you are saying it speaks how many languages? Right now, we've programmed it mainly on two, English and Chinyanja. So this guy can speak English and Chinyanja. And the two, grade 12, grade 9, they are at Jiga Ankata. Is it boarding? Yes, yes. boarding. Boarding, boarding secondary school. Yes, secondary. Yeah, in the southern province. All right, so let's get to work, guys. Let's see how you're going to go about it. What's the composition of this guy? So uh, this board is representing a terminal, and this is representing a mainframe. So it's more like the mainframe is where it gets its information from. This frame. Yes. So this is the terminal. Oh, this is the terminal? Yes. And so, then the main frame is this? Yes. But first I was wondering, what is in there? Oh, in there. Just mm. batteries. Only? Yes. These wires? Uh, wires is for the... Just to make the hands move to oh, show... Oh, for, for the body movements. Yes. And then we have... This must be a speaker. Yes. And then I see there's uh, a screen down here uh, at the back. Yes. Calculator. A so calculator? Yes. yes. What does? To uh, perform arithmetic functions, like in case maybe someone's perform uh, calculating calculation functions, he can be able to type in the... But mainly it's for showing that it's ready to process. It's representing that it's ready to process. If it lights up there, then it shows that it's working. Yes. Here? Uh, we also made the solar power, power because of the load shedding in Zambia. Mm. So we also took in measures where not, not every time that we have to use electricity. So it also, takes in, it also uses solar energy. Mm. Alternative source of energy. Yes. Because we know sometimes it could be load shedded. I like it. This was presented at the 2024 National Jets Fair. Yes. What position did you get? First. First position. Excellent. In which category? Robotics and artificial intelligence. Fantastic. I, I can judge. I'm a judge. I've judged already. <laughs> you deserve it. Thank you. What else did they say you will get for scooping position number one? Um, first lane said they're going to provide free services for their mobile apps where you can go. Okay, usually people would have to pay to access first lane, but for the people who came up to position one, would have to use it for free. Like you? Yes. Ah. Uh, in, in Luwale, how do you say congratulations? <laughs> These guys are Luwale, but they're, they're learning the language as well. No wonder it doesn't have the Luwale language yet, but they work on it. All right, thank you very much. And this? Uh, it's the controller. Controller? Yes, for the hand and to show that it's also on. Okay, switch so, it off. I want us to start from scratch. Now that we have our eye, our lens focusing on, on the laptop, just tell us briefly what, what the people are seeing. So... Uh, as I said before, this laptop is representing a mainframe. So the way it, the way it acts, so it's a wireless connection between the two. Okay. Yes. So uh, if we were to turn on this terminal, it's going to connect to the PC where it gets its information from. Who programmed what is there? Me. You did everything? Yes. Mm. 
not actually Flat. everything. Mm. Most people have been make, trying to make multiple, uh, try, try to make duplicates of Google Pick, of, of Alexa, um, Judge GPT. Mm -hmm. So using that knowledge, I thought of if, if, the, if they're possible to make it, in future plans, it's supposed to work. Uh, there'll be multiple terminals where people can buy this product. So if people buy these products the same way your phone connects to Facebook, then each, each one shares the same information. Mm. So having that in mind, if this is a terminal, that means there'll be multiple, multiple of them, then connecting to one main from where it gets its information from. Great. Yes. Let's get down to work. Let's connect. So connect it. So we press power it on. Since we said it's a wireless connection, so it should present a wireless connection between the terminal and the mainframe. So we we'll connect it to the PC where it gets its knowledge from. So this is in short, it's representing a dumb terminal. Okay. But if if it would have to be offline, that means to have to be uh, a smart terminal where it can be able to process and everything. Since the reason why we created it as a dumb terminal, we lack where we're from, chicken cutter, so that we can find the microchips like Arduinos to to do so it's just representing this is the dumb terminal this is the mainframe so mm -hmm. this is where the processes happen then it's the dumb terminal where you can input and output okay yes so we'll connect it what is going on I can see the laptop is hello doing. there I am Jenna, your very own personal assistant, educational, medic and lecturing assistant. How can I help you? Okay. If you are having troubles understanding how Jenna works, enter help. All right, pause there. Why didn't you use my voice? <laughs> your voice? Uh -huh. um, we, since the things, since artificial intelligence, not, uh, people have, have usually been creating artificial intelligence in the country like Africa. And our vocabulary is different from their vocabulary. So artificial intelligence is mostly used by countries in Europe. So the, the, that's, that's a change of vocabulary. We can't give it our own voices. It's very pos it's possible. It's possible, okay? Yes. Uh, so I propose let's use a, a voice that's Zambian. That, that's, that's my tech. So that I know that uh, these small radios, they come programmed with already a voice. Yes. Let's pick our own Sombo. Hey. Yes. Sombo Kawina, Sovia Kachongo, uh, Michael Mtondo Voya, they can do it. Yes. Let's, let's use those. Okay, cool. If we don't understand English, we can turn on Chinyanja mode. You are typing Chinyanja there? Yes. Okay. So this is a different interface now where the language option is Chinyanja. Okay. So we can ask it questions in Chinyanja. We can ask it questions in Chinyanja. Mm -hmm. But mainly we've been working on the English mode. Okay. Where you can ask it questions. If it's not there in its library, it's going to go online and web scrape. Okay. Yes. But then you need internet. Yes. For that. That's where that's where the internet comes in. But okay. we're make, we're trying to make it mostly offline and not online. What questions can I ask it in the local language that it can respond? Uh, you can ask it the time, or oh, who am I, uh, but you can ask it a lot. But we've been working mostly on the local language, but okay. mostly on English. So, in Chinyanja, if I asked it, what time it is, it will respond? Yes. As, exactly as the time is now? Yes. Okay. I have to type? Yes. Not to speak to it? No. Ta no. Type a time, boy. What? Choose that. Oh. Yes. Or oh, since it's yes. prompted to speak Nyanja, you can type in English and it will, turn, it yes. will respond in Nyanja. Okay, let's, let's hear. Time ni 11.52 a.m. Or oh, time ni 11. Yes. And ni 11.52 a.m. Okay. But do you think this system can work in our education system? How yeah. reliable do you think this will be? It's very reliable. For you to convince the judges during the Jets Fair, what did you do? Um, I showed them a demo of a lecture of a lecture session where okay i showed them a, a example of a lecture se session where if a lecture is not around it's going to go through a certain program for computer science and it did yes in english yes okay 
Ask it in English. A sophisticated question. Okay. Hello there. I am Jenna, your very own personal assistant, educational, medic and lecturing assistant. How can I help you? If you are having troubles understanding how Jenna works, enter help. So, we'd have to say English mode? Mm -hmm. Hello once more. I am Jenna. <coughs> in addition, what mode would you want to activate? To activate educational mode, enter EDU mode. To activate the medic assistant mode, enter medic mode. And to activate the lecturer mode, enter uni mode. So now it's telling us this medic mode, edu mode, mm. and uh, lecture, mode. lecture mode. So let's say if you want lecture mode, so if I was to say uni mode. Mm -hmm. Welcome student to the university lecturer mode for Project Jenna. How can I help you? So if, let's say if there's computer lesson one, mm -hmm. computer lesson one. Hello, today I will be explaining briefly on the introduction to computers. What is a computer? In the simplest terms, a computer is a machine that accepts some kind of input, performs actions and calculations according to a set of instructions and returns the result of its calculations. So All right now, in the scenario, size, the way lecturers do it, they just keep on explaining and explaining. The computer so, a uh, For example, right now it's going to be a computer start, lesson. A so there's a computer button, lesson, one, the two, of time, then and if, shows the time on a so to the person how reliable it is, also waking off then don't have to go online. So who inputs like word processors or games what it is responding? And the results so it tells me. But if what it's looking for is not there, it it needs, to go now. Yes, to go online. Yeah. I want to know how you were able to give it that information. Did you write the information, feed it via the system, or...? Um, I wrote the information. Okay. Where's the memory? The memory. Mm. It's within its codes. Here? Yes. yes. But there's also one thing that we are trying to do. There's the library that is found in Wikipedia, so that you can have a vast library so that it will, not, it will not even require any internet access for any question. That's one thing that we also want to implement. Most of our material in schools, you do agree with me, they are hard copies. Yes. yes. How do you hope to load all those, the curriculum-based material in our education sector to, to be fed in there if this guy is to do the job of a teacher? Well, like I said, uh, we are trying to link it to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia has a vast library Mm -hmm. in the sense that it can have almost every information uh, regardless of the subject. So in, in the case of where we link it to Wikipedia, it will no longer, have, it will no longer need internet access to, for research of any question because it has access now to the uh, vast library. So in the case that now it's linked up to a vast library, uh, you can be able to ask it any question regardless of the internet. Great. Two brothers, amazing minds, and so far, what they are able to do is great. Uh, I would like to know, what sort of homes do you come from, parents? How educated are they? Uh, they are educated, though. Okay. Yes. Dad is a professor? Uh, not a professor. Okay. Mom is a prof? She's a teacher. Dog? Teacher. What, what is dad doing? Uh, finance. He's a finance. How interested is he in education? Uh, he's really interested. Okay. Yes. How many are you in your family? Three. Five. Five. Five, okay. Yes, but three siblings. Okay, excellent. Oh, I like his thinking. <laughs> Two here, then three siblings. Together, five. Yes. So, it's the home of creative thinkers. And we encourage parents especially out there. And this is why I deliberately asked this question to say, how interested are the parents in education? Already we can see that the parents have been pushing uh, you guys, right? Yes. And uh, how happy are they that you've got this innovation? <laughs> They're very Excited, happy. right? Yes. We encourage you parents to continue uh, encouraging the children to innovate for Zambia. And um, some of these things are already made, but to have them have a Zambian touch is what we always encourage on the Zambian Genius. Find us on Facebook, the Zambian Genius. On Facebook again, I'm Samuel Matishi. See you next week.